you just newly started to add on After Effects. And each time you open it, you huh? get confused by the huge interface and all huh? these buttons. You thought editing would be easy, but it's actually harder than you thought. What animations am I going to use and how do I actually create them? This is so hard and confusing. Well, don't worry because today I will show you seven effects that you can use as a beginner and how you can make them. So buckle up and watch this video till the end to finally make your edits go viral. And the first effect that I'm going to show you how to do are these zoom ins that shouldn't be missing in any of your edits. And to do that, I just quickly prepared two clips. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and click on the clip that you want to put the zoom on. Go to your effects and presets panel and search for s underscore blur more curves once you found that effect make sure to drag it onto your layer and you should now see all these adjustable settings in your effects control panel and don't worry this might seem like a lot but in this case we're only going to use the z distance effect right here and to now create the zoom make sure you go to the very beginning of your clip and then set a keyframe at one now go to the end to the very last frame of your clip and put the value from one down to 0 0.8 once you've entered that value it should automatically create a second keyframe at that time and place and when you now click onto your layer and press the U button on your keyboard, it's going to bring them up. But because the standard graph right now is going linear, and to change that, we're going to go ahead and use a tool that's called Easy Easing the Keyframes. And to do that, just select both of them, right click, go to Keyframe Assistant, and press Easy Ease. Now you can go ahead and open your graph editor. And as you can see, you now have an adjustable value graph to change the speed of the animation. And to change the speed of the animation, just go ahead and click onto the graph. And once you've done that, there should be two yellow handles appearing. And what we want to do now is we're going to drag them a bit down at the beginning to make it go faster at the beginning. And then at the end, we're going to drag it a bit up. So it looks like this. What this does, it basically makes the animation be fast at the beginning, then linear throughout the zoom. And at the end, it's going to go fast again. Now you can close the graph editor again. And if your edit has more than one clip in it, which probably is going to be the case, you want to go ahead, copy the keyframes and apply this preset to the next clip as well. This is just going to save you a lot of time. So you don't have to create these keyframes and edit the graph over and over again. And to do that, just go ahead, select both the keyframes that we created. Click Ctrl and C on your keyboard, which is going to copy them. Now go to the beginning of the next clip where you want to apply the keyframes on click onto the layer and press ctrl and v to paste the same preset again right where your time indicator is located at so make sure to move it to the beginning of the clip because you want the animation to start as soon as it starts now if you press u again to bring up the keyframes you're going to see that it doesn't match with the end because the clip is slightly longer than the other one don't worry just select both of the keyframes and while pressing alt on your keyboard you can drag them out to fill your clip and if it's shorter just drag them to the left and if you now play your clip you can see that it already looks way better now adding these zoom ins is going to improve the overall look of your edit and it's going to remove the overall stiffness and in addition to that you can also add a panning which will make your edit look even smoother and i will always suggest you to add your panning onto a new adjustment layer on top of all your clips and to create an adjustment layer we're just going to go ahead on our keyboard and press ctrl alt and y as you can see this creates a new layer and the panning effect that we put onto this layer is also going to be applied to all the layers that are below it now the effect that we need for our panning is going to be s underscore shake search for it and drag it onto the adjustment layer and now what settings you put in here is very dependent on what type of edit you do. If you have a very aggressive edit, I would recommend you to use an aggressive panning. But if it's rather soft and slow, it's also recommended to use a softer and slower panning. And the main settings that you want to change is first of all, you're going to enable this little check mark that says motion blur, which is just overall going to make it smoother. Now next is amplitude. And what that changes is basically the amount that your edit is going to move. So a higher amplitude is going to result in a higher distance and range that your edit moves in. In this case, I'm going to put mine to 0.2. And also the frequency, as the name already says, is going to decide how frequent your edit moves meaning that a higher frequency is going to make it move faster and a lower frequency is going to make the edit move slower i like to use a value that's in between so i'm going to go to 2.5 and if you now play your edit from the beginning you will see that you have a lot more movement going on which will increase the look of it now if your edits always look stiff and you wonder how to make them smoother this is a good way of doing it now to not have this sudden switch between your scenes or different clips that you use a good choice is to use a fading out effect and then have the next clip fade in again which is not only going to increase the time of your transition but will also make it look way less sudden. Now there's loads of different ways and effects that you can use. I just like to use the normal opacity fading because it's built within After Effects. But obviously the procedure behind this effect always stays the same and applies to every other effect that you can use. Now because I'm going to use the normal opacity, I'm going to click onto my clip that I want to put the fading on and press T to bring up the opacity property. Now I want to have it fade in from the beginning and then at the end fade out again. So I'm going to add a keyframe at the beginning and put the value from 100 down to 50. Next, obviously because we want it to fade in, we're going to go to roughly the middle of the clip and put the value 
you all the way up to 100. And last but not least, to fade it out again, we're gonna go to the end of the clip and put it down from 100 to 30. Now again, depending on what kind of look you want, you're gonna have to adjust the settings and make it fit your liking. But as you can see, when you play it now, it looks pretty choppy and it's not really the look I want to go for for my edits. So again, we're gonna have to adjust the speed in which our animation is happening. For this again, we're gonna use Easy Ease. So go ahead, select all the keyframes, right click onto them, go to Keyframe Assistant and press Easy Ease. Open the graph editor and this time we're gonna use a speed graph instead of a value graph. And to actually select the speed graph, we're gonna right click onto the timeline and select the option that says Edit Speed Graph. As you can see, it looks slightly different. And to edit it, again, we're gonna just click onto it. Let me zoom in so you guys can see a bit more clear. And we're gonna drag the handle that is in the middle to the left and the one that's at the end also to the left till it's all the way there. Now for the other graph, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna drag it all the way to the right and also do it with the other one till it's all the way there. And now when you play your edit, you can see that the switch in between the scenes is way less sudden and looks a lot better. Now to bring more aesthetics into our edits, we're also gonna have to add some cool effects. One of my personal favorites is this cool ghost effect, which you can imply in almost every edit. And it doesn't just look cool, it's also cool to create. So once you've got a clip that you wanna put it on, we're gonna go ahead and click on the layer, then press Ctrl and D on our keyboard to duplicate the layer. This just means that you have the same clip twice now. And now very important, go to the very beginning of it and press T on your keyboard to bring up the opacity. Now set the keyframe at the beginning and put the value from 100 down to 70. Go to the end of your clip and put the value down to zero. This is gonna make our top clip slowly fade out. And to now add the actual animation, we're gonna press S on our keyboard to bring up the scaling. Also set a keyframe at the very start of our clip and put the value from 100 up to 101%. Again, go to the end and set the value to 180. If you now look at the clip, you can see that it's already moving, but obviously we don't want this linear graph. So again, select both of the keyframes, right click onto them, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Open the graph editor and this time we want our graph to be fast at the beginning and then slowly decrease in speed. To do that, again, just click onto your graph and now move the handle that you have on the bottom to the top so it looks like this. Now you can see that at the beginning it will move fast, but to make it even faster, we're gonna just wreck the second one a bit ahead. Just like that. And by looking at the curve, you can now tell that it's fast in the beginning and then slowly will decrease in speed. Now again, close the graph editor and take a look at it. Now what's important here that you actually add this effect onto a new layer on top of your original one. Because otherwise you won't have this animation and will only show your clip fading out. To now make it look way more aesthetic, you can add a flicker, which will just bring more life into your edit. And again, just like with the panning, we're gonna add it onto a new adjustment layer. So go ahead and press Ctrl, Alt and Y on your keyboard and it should create this extra layer. Now the effect that we need for flicker is called S underscore flicker, who would have thought? So go ahead and search for S underscore flicker in your effects and presets panel. Drag it onto the adjustment layer. And now the settings you use here are also gonna be dependent to your personal preferences and what type of edit you're trying to do. The two main settings that you wanna change are the amplitude and the random frequency. The amplitude again, it's just gonna be the amount of flicker that there's gonna be. The higher you go, the more it's gonna flicker. And the lower you go, the less it's gonna be. I like to go for a kind of low-key look, so I'm gonna put it from 0.2 down to 0.12. And now for the random frequency, this is just gonna decide how fast it flickers. Again, a higher frequency is gonna mean faster, and a lower one is gonna mean slower. I like to be in between, so I'm gonna put it to 15. And if you now take a look, you can see that you have this flicker animation. And if you combine this effect with the panning that I showed you earlier, it's gonna make up some great points. And I ensure you, yeah, this will already look way better. Now another cool transition that you can use in between your clips is this directional blur effect which almost looks like a shake and the effect we need for that is also just called directional blur. Once you got it just drag it onto your clip and there's not a lot of settings that you can change in here it's basically just the blur and the direction. Now the blur length is just gonna be the amount of blur which I'm gonna put to 100 and set a keyframe for at the very beginning of our clip. And the direction is gonna decide in which way it goes. If you put it to zero, it's just gonna be vertical. But if you want it to be horizontal, but if you want it to be horizontal, just change this value from zero to 90. But I want mine to be vertical, so I'm just gonna leave it at zero. Now go to the very end of your clip and put the value for the blur length from 100 down to zero. If you now press U, you should see that you have two keyframes, which you're also gonna change to graph for. So just select both of them, right click, Go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Now open the graph editor. Make sure it's value graph. So we're gonna go ahead, click on it and move this yellow handle down. Now the second one at the bottom, we're gonna move towards it just like this. Depending on how fast you want your animation to be, you can always change these values and make it a bit slower or faster. I'm just gonna go for this and now go ahead and close your graph editor again. Now because you can see we have these black edges at the end, we're gonna add an extra effect that's gonna remove them. So go to your effects and presets panel and search for motion tile. Drag it onto your layer. Now just put the output height from 100 up to 250. Also enable this check mark that says mirror edges and drag this effect above the directional blur one so it's at the very top. As you can see these black edges now disappeared and to apply it to the next clip just go 
ahead, select the keyframes. And now while pressing your shift key, press this motion tile effect that you can see under the effects controls panel because you obviously also want this one to be copied. Press control and C and go to your next clip. Now select this one and press control and V and adjust the keyframes if you need to by pressing down alt and then dragging them till they fit. Now, as you can see, if you play your clip, you have this cool animation. And now obviously, depending on how you want yours to turn out, you're gonna have to adjust the blur amount and the speed of the graph. For me, this looks fine, but there's loads of different variants, so make sure to experiment. And last but not least, don't forget to add a good color correction to your edits. It's a mistake I see so many new editors do, because just look at the quality that you're missing out on. Adding a good color correction can increase the quality of your edits by a lot. It won't just get you a lot of views, but also will boost the potential of your edits to the top. And if you now wonder where you can get such a color correction, don't worry, because I'm still currently running a huge sale on my shop. You can get all my presets for up to 70% cheaper, and I just newly dropped the new winter pack, where you can get these amazing color corrections. I mean, just look at that. So be fast and don't miss out on your opportunity to becoming the best. And once you start implementing all the effects I showed you today into your edits, I'm sure they will look a lot better. So leave a like and subscribe if you liked this video and it was helpful. Also, let me know in the comments down below what tutorial you want to see next. And if you want to get free overlays, scene packs, and talk to other editors, make sure to check out my Discord server. It's the link in the description. I'm on there basically 24-7. You can ask me questions or just get in touch with me. And it's an overall great environment. As always, that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.